We're here to demonstrate the proper loading procedure of the silicone template inside of the press to cook the Red Drive 45. When your press arrives, it'll be fully clamped in place and you'll undo your bolts, both the back side and the front side, lift the top beam, place it on a piece of cloth or on the edge to protect the platen. You'll then release the locking nuts on the outside clamps. You'll then take your silicone template and align it in the center of the platen, lining up with the outside beams. You notice you have a, an equal distance between the posts here and there. You then take a piece of your belt, open your clamps, lock the belt down inside the silicone template, just presses inside. You then can take the belt and align it inside the clamp. Lock down your belt material. Now that it's nice and tight and everything's aligned, we then take our pressure plate. We align our pressure plate to the top of the belt. And we confirm that we have it nice and centered over the top, completely covering the belt material to ensure the best splice possible. We then tighten down all of our clamps, put on down, clamp our silicone template in place, and now you're ready to press. say you show up to your press and you open everything up and some of the products inside are damaged. We have the pressure plate which has an individual item number. We also have a uh, white silicone cloth that's available in a nine foot piece. And of course the most important product inside the press is your silicone mold. This has a reorder item number directly printed on the, the silicone pad. You can go to motion.com and find all of those consumable products available on our website today. Let's visualize for a second that you're getting set to prepare the ends of your splice. Your belts have been strung onto the machine and you're getting ready to take the loose end and prepare the end of your cut. Take your belt, swing it back and you're gonna go in left to right across the deck, putting it down inside this channel until it's flush on the end. Clamp your end. Make sure your belt is nice and flat across the surface. Clamp your second end. You'll take the handle on the back side and you'll slowly turn the handle to begin the cutting process. Nice and even, slow movements. No need to rush this process. Lock our cutting handle. We release our clamps. We remove our belt and there's your cut. Now we have our one end prepared. We then take our second end. Again, pulling it up from the conveyor, sticking it top side down, across that channel. Clamping it firmly to the, to the deck, making sure the belt's nice and tight. Once it's clamped into place, then release my handle. Turn the cutter in the opposite direction. Again, nice, slow, even cuts.
release your clamps, and you have your fingers prepared. You're now able to take your belt ends and load them into your press and to begin your splice. Undo your bolts, remove your top beam from your press, open up your clamps, and your best solution is to make sure that you line up the splice right in the middle of the press so that you know that your fingers will be completely cooked. Snap the belt into place. Lock those clamps, those exterior clamps, to ensure the belt does not move. Once they're well aligned in the center, you take your second end, slide it in close to your first set. No need to be nice and tight at first. Get your fingers started. And there's no need to trim the fingers because you can slide them together like this, press the fingers firmly together. Snap it the rest of the way into the silicone template and your result should be nice, tight, firm fingers. Close your clamp. Lay on your silicone sheet and place your pressure plate over the top of the surface. You're ready to close your press. Close down your bolts and now you're ready to press. Now the press that you receive is going to arrive preloaded with both recipes for the belts that you may need inside your facility. In this instance, we're going to look for the Red Drive 45 recipe. So with your belt already loaded, you're ready to start your cook. You're first going to come down here to the bottom. You're going to turn on your power button. The press is then going to ask you to validate that you have your 110 power board here. And using this a rolling silver dial and button, I'm going to scroll down to correct and press to select the 110 power cord. As you can see, we don't have the Red Drive 45 selected as our recipe. So again, using the dial, we can scroll down to load recipe. And we're going to select load recipe. On our legacy equipment sold after 2019, you will find all of our preloaded recipes under zero custom. All equipment sold after June of 2022 you will find all of our recipes under the number one motion folder. Select the folder using the silver wheel and you'll see the recipes the same as the rest of this video. And we're gonna go down to the number zero, custom, and select custom. And we're going to scroll down to the recipe that we'd like. As you can see, we have Red Drive 45 right there. Select Red Drive 45. Our recipe is loaded and ready to go. We're now prepared to start our, our cook. We hit the green button and start the process. If you have any additional questions, please visit miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Now the press has just audibly told us that the cycle is over. And as we look at their screen, you can see the green flashing light which indicates the whole cycle is finished. And our total splicing time was 19 minutes and 10 seconds from the time we started to the time we finished. So now we wanna undo our press so that we can inspect our splice. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reach down and we're gonna turn our power off. We're then going to press the blue button to release the air in the press. Then can disconnect our power cord. Undo our clamps.
lift that press. Remove our pressure plate. And the finishing temperature was 70 degrees C, which is warm, but not enough to hurt you. Pull back that silicone sheet, perfect spots. Undo our clamps. And there is our finished spice. Hi, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions. And today we're here to talk about cutting issues regarding your NDX cutter. If you're having a challenge, the cutter itself is not cutting the whole way through your belt. What are some of your ways that you can best figure out what the issue is with your cutter? The very best step to start with is changing your nylon cutting pad. As you can see, there are deep grooves that begin to channel into the nylon cutting pad. And it is a consumable item. So we'll order a new pad, the material come in with a brand new set of fasteners in a plastic bag. To start, we want to use our cut resistant gloves, which are provided. Grab your uh, hex head screwdriver. Take the pad out of the way. You can check your fasteners and reuse them as you like. Take your brand new nylon pad. Both sides are the same. Place it back on the surface. Line up your bolt holes. And tighten them in place. Now that I have the bolts tightened down, we're ready to cut. In many instances, this is the first step to eliminate any kind of cutting issues that you may have. For additional information or to order your consumable parts, go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions. And today we're here to talk about the NDX cutter that's having some cutting issues. Let's say for whatever reason you are cutting your belt and it's not cutting the whole way through. You've adjusted or replaced your nylon pad and now you're thinking it's probably time for me to replace my blades as well. You'll order a consumable replacement kit from motion.com and inside that kit you'll find a pair of cut resistant gloves, some Allen wrenches, and a replacement set of blades. Because we're working directly with the blade in this instance, we're going to make sure we put on our cut resistant gloves. You'll notice there are three Allen nuts on the very front of the machine. You're going to loosen those nuts and take them out. Once this is removed, you'll notice the exposed blade and some thumb screws to loosen your blade. Loosen the thumb screw and remove your blade. You'll notice that there's an edge on the inside to set the proper depth of where your blade needs to sit. Grab your new blade, slide it back inside the block, aligning the ends, tighten down your thumb screws, and replace the cutting blade back inside it. Take your bolts and reapply them to the head. At this point, now you'll have a fresh brand new cutting pad and a fresh new blade, and you can go ahead and check your cutting results. If you have any additional questions, or if you need to reorder any consumable products, please go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much.